Okay everyone, this is video 16-1 and we are wrapping up here in our unit on circles. This is the first video for module 16 and I just want to commend you guys for sticking with us through some of those really long videos in module 15. Good work. These are going to be much shorter. So today we're going to be talking about um, the circumference formula and I'm here at explain one and we are on page 853. So first, before we start applying the circumference formula, let's just review what that is. The circumference is always equal to 2 times the number pi times the radius of the circle. And remember, the number pi is what we call an irrational number. So it has uh, decimal values, decimal places that repeat forever. Uh, we are being asked in this section to use 3.14 when it comes to using pi in the calculations. So we have c equals 2 pi r or possibly also c equals pi times the diameter because the diameter is the same thing as 2 times r or twice the radius. So there's two different formulas we can use depending on what the given information is. Example 1, we're told in this Ferris wheel here that we have a diameter of 40 feet. Diameter, remember, goes all the way across. So we are interested first in taking the diameter and cutting it in half to get our radius. Once we have our radius, we're just going to plug it into our circumference formula. So 2 times pi times the radius of 20, and we're going to substitute the value 3.14 in our calculators for pi, and we get 125.6. So the circumference is 125.6 feet approximately. All of these are going to be approximations when you're using a rounded value for pi or even when you're using the stored value for pi in your calculator. So for part B, we're going to fill in. The pottery wheel here has a diameter of 2 feet. We want to know what is its circumference. So again, if we have the diameter is 2, then the radius is going to be 1 foot. And so we can do 2 times substitute your 3.14 for pi, and then times 1. And then that comes out to be 6.28 inches. So at the bottom of the page here, we have your turns 4 and 5. Make sure that you've done those before you go on to the next part of the video. And I will just give you a heads up. This time it is the circumference that you know and you are finding what the diameter is. Um, I'll just get this equation set up for you here. So if the circumference is 20 feet, then as I set up my equation, circumference equals, now notice we're given that we want to find the diameter this time. So let's set up the version of that equation that is pi d instead of 2 pi r. This time we're told the circumference is 20, so we're going to substitute what we know, and we're going to find out what is the diameter. So remember, pi is a number, and we're going to solve by dividing both sides here by pi, and I'll let you finish that. Okay, so kind of set that one up similar to that for number 5. Okay, the second formula we're going to be applying today is the area formula. So if we're looking here at explain 3, remember the area formula is area equals pi times r squared. And the way that I always remember this versus 2 pi r, which uses the exact same numbers and um, uh, variables just in a different combination, is I just remember the little mnemonic here that the 2 is in the air, in other words, in the exponents for area. So again, air, area, that's how I remember that. So the 2, where is it in the formula? It's in the air for area. Okay, so part A, we have a rectangular piece of cloth that is 3 feet by 6 feet. We want to know what is the largest circle that can be cut from the cloth. And obviously, 
the smaller dimension is what's going to restrict that. So the diameter of the largest circle is the 3 feet across, or 36 inches. And notice we're changing this to inches because they asked us to round to the nearest square inch for our area there. So 36 inches is the diameter. That means the radius is 18 inches. We're going to plug in the 18 for our radius spot. And we're going to square the 18 and we get 324 and then times pi. And then in this case, we're going to use again um, 3.14 for our pi variable, so we have 1017.9 inches squared, or to the nearest square inch, that rounds up to 1018. For part B, we are told that a slice of circular pizza, a slice of a circular pizza, measures 9 inches in length. So along one side, it is 9 inches long. We want to know what is the area of the entire circular pizza. We're using 3.14 again here for pi. So it says the 9 inch side of the pizza is also the length of the what? Well, if we think about cutting out a slice, the side of the piece of pizza is the same thing as the radius, of course, of the circle. So in this case, the radius is going to be 9. So we're going to take pi r squared, our formula, and we're going to substitute 9 in for the radius. 9 squared is 81, so 81 pi is what I'm finding the approximation for when I use 3.14, and that is 254.34. And so to the nearest square inch, the area of the pizza is 254 inches squared. So continuing for your your turn here at the bottom of the page, you are going to take the idea of a swimming pool and we want to know how much material is going to be needed to cover the surface of the pool. That is again another area formula and make sure that you are using the substitution 3.14 when it times, comes time to put pi in and find your final answer. Also, don't forget, you have an elaborate problem here at the top of page 856 where you are being asked if you double the radius, does that double the area? So I want you to think about instead of putting r in, putting in 2r in the r spot in the formula and seeing what that does. And we will talk about that tomorrow.